Hey guys, uh, welcome to my Putt Putt Let's Play. Uh, today we're playing Putt Putt Goes to the Moon. You'll notice I have a speed run timer because the only way I derive joy from things is competition. So let's just get into this. There's a little cute song at the beginning, but we don't have time for that. Let's get down to this. So, uh, just a quick overview of the plot since we're flying by it pretty fast. <laughs> A freak accident at the fireworks factory in the beginning of the game caused by Putt-Putt's dog Pep causes both of them to be launched into outer space. Putt-Putt and Pep both land on the moon and have to get home before dinner. He meets a lonely moon buggy named Rover and with his help has to collect the required rocket parts and glowing moon crystals to purchase his ride back home. Putt-Putt had a really intense development cycle. It's very clear that a lot of love went into this game. Contrary to popular opinion that Putt-Putt's name came from the fatal car accident, Putt-Putt's name was actually inspired by a test rocket used in Project Orion by the United States NASA program. The program was sadly scrapped because of the partial test ban treaty preventing all detonations of nuclear weapons, but uh... <laughs> Russo! I told you to turn that damn thing off! I don't care! No more cooking! Uh, anyways, uh, where was I? Wait, yeah, so the, the game actually has a lot of references to the history of space exploration. For example, the glowing space rocks you have to collect their allusion to the engine designs of rockets coming out of Project Rover which was an American project to develop a nuclear thermal rocket that utilized a large propulse unit, which consisted of a beryllium oxide channel filler surrounded by a uranium mirror using a flat plate of tungsten as propellant. Um, but uh, I think Putt-Putt Goes to the Moon is one of the harder games in the Putt-Putt series. I'm still holding out for an announcement at E4. I mean, the Masters Collection for Xbox Six was all right and all, but I didn't enjoy the graphics overhaul. They also patched crucial skips, which made them run 13 seconds overall. Not to mention there being loading screens to load the pre-rendered cutscenes now. Um, uh, so one of the reasons I speedrun this game is that growing up, I spent a lot of time playing this game. I, I had a race car bed that I named Thomas, and I would try to talk to him like Putt Putt. Uh, my mom still has some of the old MP4s of me talking to him that she insists are cute. But I don't really think so. I still consider Rover one of my closest friends. Speaking of friends, my friend Clayton and I got in an argument because uh, Jail broke his Xbox to get the Castle Crasher DLC characters. Um, his mom said we couldn't get the DLC right now, so I just went ahead and did it. I mean, I just wanted to play Pink Knight. The RNG in this section is super annoying. This game's sound design is really evocative of the overall feel the developers were trying to get across. The theme of exploration is really palpable. This game is about moving out into the unknown and experiencing new things, which are sometimes dangerous. For instance, the alien merchants who sell you parts to the ship are confusing, yet kind. Uh, while this game may not have the complex design of LucasArts, most obviously absent is the taste feature prevalent in the genre, it still has depth to it. I mean, the game having less features showcases the designer's skill in making a perfectly streamlined experience a minimalistic UI. The fact that Putt-Putt has such a small array of items to complete his mission helps create an atmosphere of an impossible situation through which, it, with his sheer determination, he succeeds. Hold on, I've got to concentrate here.
I'll get to that later. I've got a lot of respect for the designers of this game, so I'm just gonna be quiet for the credits.